Here we are in Rutford, Tennessee, the last home of Davy Crockett. And that's where we're heading to today. Hey everyone, Barefoot Dave here, and today I'm in Rutford, Tennessee, at the home, the last home, of Davy Crockett. And in just a moment we're going to get to take a little tour of the inside of the house here. So I'm inviting you to come along with me today and enjoy this adventure. This is Davy Crockett's last home here in Rutford. Crockett County. This pioneer finally settled on a farm about four and a half miles east. Following his last defeat for re-election to Congress, he went to Texas where he died in, in the Alamo Massacre. This cabin, restored partially from timbers of his original dwelling by public and spirited citizens, now serves as a memorial to him and as a frontier museum. His mother is also buried here. So let's go see Davy Crockett's cabin. This is a replica of Davy Crockett's cabin. Built with some actual pieces of wood from the original cabin. Okay, let's go inside and take a look at Davy Crockett's cabin. First thing I noticed here is the bear skin on the wall. He was a, a bear hunter. Now the song says he killed a bear by the time he was three, but that's not actually true. That was just a song that was written for a Walt Disney film. David did kill a lot of bears, and if I'm not mistaken, when he lived here in West Tennessee, one season he killed 500 bears. And here's one of the famous pictures of Davy Crockett with his hunting hounds and his famous rifle. Now, he had a name for his rifle, and I can't remember what it is. But this is the famous uh, hunting clothes that he would wear. Okay, if you see here, there's some yellow writing on these logs and I was just informed that these are some of the original logs from Davy's cabin. This is Matilda Crockett and she was the youngest child of Davy Crockett. She lived from 1821 to 1890. Picture of John W. Crockett and Charles Flowers, great grandson of Davy Crockett. He lived from 1880 to 1960. Here's two actors that have played Davy Crockett, Fess Parker and John Wayne. 
I believe John Wayne played the part in the movie Alamo and Fess Parker in the movie Davy Crockett. Here's a depiction of Davy Crockett fighting off a wildcat. Okay, let's go into the next room here. Davy Crockett was known as the Lion of the West, mainly because he was so outspoken when he was in Congress. He once said, I'm at liberty to vote as my conscience and judgment dictate to be right without the yoke of any party on me. I think one of the sayings that uh, Davy Crockett had was that uh, if it's right, then go ahead. And here's uh, music to the song about Davy Crockett called Go Ahead, which was his motto. He would say, if you know it to be right, go ahead. Here's a wood carving of Davy Crockett and a little model replica of his home. Here's an interesting little lamp with a picture of Davy fighting a bear. And the base of it is a cannon. Here above the mantel, as a replica of the gun that Davy would have used. He actually named his gun Betsy, and he bought it when he was 17 years old. It was one of the best shooting guns ever, and he kept it in his entire life. This looks to be an old uh, children's book on Davy Crockett. And if you see there, he's in some icy looking water, and as the story goes, he crossed the Obion River when it was frozen over and nearly froze to death. Uh, just went to prove just how tough of a man Davy Crockett was that he could endure such trials like this. I was told if I used caution I could go upstairs, so let's go up and take a look. Here's an old cider mill, apple cider mill. And I can't remember what this is here. I think that's for crushing corn, possibly. All of these things would have been items used back when Davy was alive. There's an ox yoke. Another old picture of Davy. And here's a loom. Some of you may know this, but the children, usually in a family during the pioneer days, would sleep up in the loft. And can you imagine how hot it would be in the summertime? Now, in the wintertime, it may have actually been a little, a little nicer. Looks like we've got an old bear skin here. It's seen better days. So, as I mentioned, I read uh, one of Davy Crockett's books. One of the interesting things I read in the book was that when he lived here, he got into the business of making um, slats for uh, barrels. And he had hired some men and opened his own mill up to, to cut the, the wood. And they made an unbelievable number of slats. And I'm thinking the number was like a million or more. And they built these uh, bar river barges so they could transport these slats down the um, Obine River and on to the Mississippi. Well, as the story goes, he got the slats made and got the barges loaded. There was three of them, and they were loaded pretty heavy. And they made it just fine down the Obine River. When they finally got to the Mississippi River is where they ran into problems. And uh, the Mississippi River can be unforgiving and pretty rough. And when they got down near Memphis, they started having some troubles. The barges were trying to sink and they couldn't steer them. They tried lashing the barges together, which made things worse. They were near Memphis and the barges started going down. Well, Davy was inside of one of them and would have perished uh, in the barge, but he was grabbed by one of his workers and pulled through a window 
barely big enough for him to, to come through. Nearly tore the hide off of him, uh, getting him through that window. Well, he uh, was rescued by a man uh, there in Memphis that um, saw what was happening. He was a prominent businessman. He had heard of Davy Crockett's fame. He was the one that, that got Davy started in public office in Congress. So there's some interesting history around Davy's life here in West Tennessee. There's a whole lot more. There was a time that he crossed the Obine River in the middle of the winter and it was froze over. How he didn't freeze to death was a miracle. Hardships were common uh, in his lifetime. He had a hard way to go, hard way of living. Uh, life was not easy for Davy. Another story that uh, I read about Davy growing up was that when he was a very young man, I believe he was 14, he ran away from home because he'd gotten in trouble with his schoolmaster. He was afraid of his dad. He was afraid of his schoolmaster. Literally thought his dad would kill him for playing hooky from school. So Davy left home at the age of 14 and was gone for two years. He did various things. He traveled up north. I believe he worked on a, on a ship at one time. And when he came home, his family did not even recognize him. Can't imagine at such a tender age leaving home and being on your own like that. Uh, but obviously that's some of the things that made Davy such a tough person. His oldest sister um, was hired out to pay off a debt when she was very young. I believe she was only maybe 12. The man that she worked for uh, ended up getting her pregnant. When he found out that she was pregnant, he made her leave. Davy's father was so upset that she had left, I guess because she could no longer help work off the debt. He kind of disowned her and she went to live with a, a minister and um, sadly died giving birth to that child. And that's just, that's heartbreaking to think about how hard things were for someone that young. But that was kind of the life back then. It was, it was a hard way for people had to live. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for today here from Davy Crockett's Cabin. Hope you enjoyed this little tour, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Till next time, make each day an adventure, and have a good one.